Craig Kennedy speaking. Good afternoon, Mr. Kennedy. I'm so glad I caught you in. Yes, uh, sorry, I can't seem to place the voice. This is Mrs. Alban Arkwright Fielding. Oh, yes, yes. How are you, Mrs. Fielding? Distressed almost to death. It's my son, Bruce, again. I see. Well, what's Brucey been up to this time? He's going to run away and get married. <laughs> People are doing it every day, Mrs. Fielding. I suppose so. But I forbade this marriage. He'll be disinherited if he goes through with it. Yes, yes, I remember the terms of your husband's will. I want you to keep Bruce from doing this silly thing. Oh, now, really, Mrs. Fielding. Mr. Kennedy, if my dear husband were alive, you'd help him. Yes, yes, I was very fond of Alban Arkwright. Well, tell me where I can find this problem child of yours. He's gone to our country place. He asked the butler for the keys. And I do not approve of the girl he's in love with. She sings and dances. Bruce won't listen to me. Mrs. Fielding, what's the address of your country place? I'll have to hurry to get out there before dark. It's on the old Delta Pike. 1616 Hidden Lane Road. Please hurry, Mr. Kennedy, and tell Bruce. I know what to tell him, Mrs. Fielding. Goodbye. What's happened to you? Oh. Oh, hello, Bruce. Oh. What happened to me? I, I don't know. Yet. What are you doing here? I came to see you. Me? What about? Telephone working? Yes. Hmm. You said you came down to see me? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Anyone else here? The caretaker, Joshua, and his two nephews. Uh-huh. Phone in the living room? Yes, it's on the desk. Get me the Crescent Tennis Club in town, please. You're acting funny. What gives? Well, Bruce, I came down here to please your mother. The mother's at it again. She wanted you to talk me out of marrying Dixie? She did mention it, and perhaps she's right. I know the terms of your father's will. You'll be cut off without a penny. 
I don't care. I love Dixie, and we're going to be married right away. Crescent Tennis Club. Well, let me speak to Walter Jameson, please. Now, don't be impatient, Bruce. Three quarters of a million is a lot of money. Is uh, Dixie worth it? You bet she is. And I'll thank you to keep out of my affairs. Hello. Oh, hello, Walt. Hi, Craig. Missed a good game. Took the inspector for three sets. But I think he has enough left to buy you a cup of coffee. Hurry over. But not now, Walt. Anything wrong? Take down this address, will you? 1616 Hidden Lane Road, on the Delta Pike. Uh, give me that again. Hidden Lane Road, 1616 is the number. Got it. Uh, who lives there? It's the summer home of Mrs. Alban Arkwright Fielding. Ah, the Mrs. Fielding. Yeah. Uh, bring J.J. with you. He's standing right here. He'll be over in two shakes. Uh, what's up, Craig? Mm, uh, just come down. Roger. Now, Bruce, we'll... What, Mr. Kennedy? What were you going to say? I want to talk to, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Joshua, the caretaker. I demand to know what's going on. And I also want to talk to his nephews. I repeat, I want to know what this is all about. And who's coming down to meet you? Friends of mine, Walter Jameson, the newspaper reporter, and Inspector Burke of the police department. Dixie! Brucie, Ma, honey, love. Sweetie pie. <laughs> What's so funny? Who's he? Craig Kennedy, a criminologist. A criminologist? Gosh, Brucey, you didn't say we were doing anything criminal to sneak off and get married. We're not criminals, dear. Mother wants him to talk to me about our marriage. Well, I won't listen to you. Do you know the terms of his father's will, Miss... Uh... Ramsey. My first name is Lydia, but everybody calls me Dixie. I guess it's because of my southern accent. Yes, it could be because of your accent. Uh-huh. Well, Miss Ramsey, Bruce stands to lose a considerable sum of money if he marries you now. Just how much is a considerable sum of money, Mr. Criminologist? <laughs> Uh, three quarters of a million. Wow! That's a lot of shekels. I mean money. Well, let's not talk about the money, Dixie. But we must, Brucey. After all, you know the old saying, when poverty flies in the window, love flies out. Well, it isn't as bad as that, Miss Ramsey. You see, Bruce's father didn't want him to marry until he'd reached his 25th birthday. I'm 23. Yes. If he marries before he's 25, he'll be disinherited. Gee, that's a setup. Oh, forget about it, honey. Let's be sensible, Brucey. Sensible? Yes. You never told me you'd lose all that dough, uh, money. You said we had to sneak our marriage because of your mother's objection. We ought to wait. Two years isn't a long time if... If two people are really in love. I've taken just about enough from you. Okay, okay. Find the caretaker and his nephews for me. What for? He wants to talk to Clinton Ajax. Who wants to talk to us? Clint, this is Mr. Kennedy. I'm Clint Cody. This is Ajax Powell. How do you do, Mr. Cody? Mr. Powell? Hiya. Uh, where's your Uncle Joshua? He, uh, went into the village for something. What do you want to see him about? Say, you're a cop? Not exactly. He's a criminologist. A what? Never mind, Ajax. Mr. Cody, did you just arrive here? No, I've been here all day. Anything else you want to know? No, no, that's all. Come on, Ajax. We'll see if we can find Uncle Joshua so the man can uh, talk to him. Just a minute. Yeah? I wouldn't leave the premises if I were you. What is this, a pinch? We ain't done nothing. Nobody's arresting you. Does your mother approve of the caretaker having his relatives around the place? She wouldn't care. Josh has been with us a long time. He must get lonesome here. The house has been closed since father died. Well, uh, maybe we'd better go fix something to eat. 
Hi, Brucey. Good idea. I'll help you, Dixie. Oh, uh, we won't attempt to run away from the police. where the grass is pressed down, J.J.? Mm, could be you did see two men carrying a body. Couldn't identify him, huh? No, my headlights illuminated the scene for only a moment. And of course, I wasn't expecting anything like that. Mm, that accounts for the clunk on your head. Yeah. What do you make of this setup, Craig? I don't know, Walt, except that there's something phony about it. Well, if I could use a phone, I'd start a check on Clinton, Asia. Say, it's working up into a good storm. Yeah, we're liable to get stuck down here, and I can think of a thousand places I'd like better. <laughs> the phone's in here, J.J. <laughs> Cheerful joint. Wonder if it's haunted. I can get the job for you. <laughs> what does Liverboy say about his marriage? Brucey? Oh, he's definitely in love, J.J. <laughs> Operator. Operator. Phone's out. Well, there's always carrier pigeons. <laughs> and uh, speaking of birds, uh, that reminds me, I'm hungry. I knew that would come up. You might try chiseling something. The kitchen's out there. Well, thanks. And don't make a pig of yourself. <laughs> mm. Got any ideas about that dead phone? Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look around outside. I'd like to talk to that caretaker. Yeah, me too. He should be back by now. Joshua. Well, who are you? You must be Mrs. Fielding. I most assuredly am, and I should like to know what you're doing here. Well, my name's Cody, ma'am. Uh, Clint Cody. I'm Joshua's nephew. Me and my cousin Ajax dropped by to see my uncle. Oh, I see. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, goodbye. Well, who's he? I don't know. Where is Joshua? The wind didn't do that job. No. Cut neatly with a pair of pliers. This is getting better and better. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Just a growing boy. Huh. Mrs. Feeling didn't pay her phone bill, huh? <laughs> Stop trying to make with the funny stuff. Mama's here, in there, talking to Clint. Oh, no. They didn't even know who I was. You go in and talk to him. I'm going to drive down the road till I find a phone. Good, good. The sooner we get the make on the nephews, the better. And while you're at it, phone the paper. Tell the old man I'm working on a hot story, huh? Uh-huh, I'll phone. Yeah, never mind. All right, suit yourself. Well, cheerio. Have fun, boys. Uh, see anything of the caretaker? No. How about Ajax? Oh, he must have crawled under a rug. <laughs> <laughs>
the way it looks to me, Walt. Yeah? yeah? Murder! Police! The murder! What is it, Mrs. Fielding? Uh, the chest. The chest. I saw the chest. The lid moved. The one in the living room? Yeah, it was horrible. I was putting my jewelry in the safe. It was terrible. I saw the lid of the chest start to open. Oh, now, now, don't upset yourself, Mrs. Fielding. Don't upset yourself, he tells me. Maybe the place is haunted, Don't huh? Don't say such things. It's empty. Empty? I don't believe it. Oh, you're right. I, I don't understand. I must be losing my mind, and yet I saw no, it. Now, now, now. You run along to bed. Just leave everything to me. There's nothing to be afraid of. I suppose not, but I, I must talk to Brucey. I, will you please lock the safe, Mr. Kennedy? Of course. You get some sleep. Yes. What's the matter? Mice been in the safe? Well, I'm sure Mrs. Fielding wouldn't put her jewelry away like this. <laughs> She'd been weighed down all that stuff on her. Yeah. Hey. These are the things she had on tonight. Uh-huh. Wow. Take a look at that. Hey. Almost enough there to pay the national debt. <laughs> uh-uh, no touchy. Oh, I forgot fingerprints. Huh? Maybe. I don't get this at all. Well, hold this. Don't tell me you think she actually saw the lid move. What gives, Craig? Just a minute, Walt. What is it? Walt, put all that jewelry back in the safe. Uh, here's the rubber band. What? Mrs. Fielding's pieces, too. Hurry. OK, but I sure hate to leave this stuff in here long. Uh, you better close the chest, Walt. Your slightest wish is my command, dear sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jameson. What you got, huh? huh? Dried particles of mud. So? Maybe somebody was in that chest wall. Sure. What's the matter with my thinking machine? A body has feet, feet wear shoes. It's raining out, mud cakes on shoes. Body in chest, mud falls off of shoes. Oh, if J.J. were here, he'd be proud of you. And speaking of dear old J.J., he ought to be back here by now. Uh, yeah, he'll be along. What are you looking for now? More mud. Hmm, nothing over here. Let me see now. Just a little over here. Well, I can't say that anybody walked away from that chest. Huh? Gee, I'm getting scared. <laughs> Well, let's take a turn around the grounds and see if we can find the caretaker and his nephews. Also, get my gun out of the car, huh? Allegro. Huh? That's a musical term. Oh, yes, yes. It means quicker, lively. But, Walt, let's not be fortissimo about it, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> stuff and get going. All right, all right, we'll get going. Stop squawking. I hope you finished off that police inspector. Go on, open it. I bet he's got at least a couple of bent fenders. He's gone. I'm getting as far away from this place as I can. Oh, no, you don't. He couldn't have moved by himself. Snap out of it. OK, now don't just stand there. Keep your eyes peeled. Stuff, ain't you? Yeah. That's funny. We got an extra prize. Hey, not bad. That's for being nice boys. Say, how did this get in there and our stuff wasn't even touched? One of us lives right. Come on, let's move. Hold it, Clint. What do you want? 
Your guns, for one thing. Hey, you can't pin up on me. No, I suppose you just found all these jewels. They happen to fit the description of valuables stolen from the Brewster home three months ago. You've been using this home as a hideout. Pretty smart of you to hide the stuff in the safe. Well, we figured nobody touched Such it. Such a trap. Now, where's your uncle? If he is your uncle. Everybody put up your hands. Uncle Josh. And drop them guns. I'll take that jewelry, mister. You're out of your mind, Joshua. You haven't recovered from those sleeping drops. How did you know about that? I found the bottle in your room and detected the odor of the drug in your drinking glass. You're right, Mr. Criminologist. Them two no-count nephews of mine made a deal with me. I was to let them stay here till the heat blowed over. L listen, Uncle Joshua. You keep them covered and we'll get out of here. I know we can get a good price for this stuff. No, you don't, Clint. I'm getting out of here alone. You two tried to double-cross me. When Mr. Bruce brought the young lady here, you got scared. And you tried to put me to sleep. You thought I talked too much. Fine thing to do to your old uncle. Now, you hand over that jewelry. I don't trust nobody. I got nothing here but junk. Now, who's got the real jewelry? We ain't got it, Uncle Josh. Honest. I switched the jewelry, Joshua. Now give me that gun. Now you give me that jewelry. Uh, don't shoot, J.J. Yeah, you thought I'd fall for that old one, eh? But I won't. You'd better look behind you, Joshua. No, sir. Thanks, J.J. Boy, this is one time I'm really glad to see you, J.J. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Bruce has come to his senses at last. Goodbye, Mrs. Fielding. I think you kids are wise to wait for that marriage. I think Dixie and I'll get along fine. Why, thank you, mother-in-law-to-be. Three quarters of a million's a lot of dough. I mean cash. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Craig. Uncle Joshua and his nephews are getting anxious to be locked up. <laughs> right with you. Oh, uh, and so ends the case of 1616 Hidden Lane Road. So long. <laughs>